Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Amethyst or Pearl from Steven Universe, and like and subscribe for a stronger heart next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Davy Jones, the bassist for the Monkees. He was born in Manchester, England in 1945, and according to this background footage, apparently he had tentacles all over his face. I wonder if that helps him out as a musician. Let the music move you! You can do it! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be an ocean man, cursed with lots of tentacles and crab claws, basically any kind of sea creature. Next, we need to buckle our swashes with flourishes of swords to carve through the hearts of our enemies before they can carve through ours. Finally, we need to go for a dip, diving deep into the ocean and popping out somewhere else. For stats, we'll be using the standard point right from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch that charisma modifier, you gotta be spooky. Charisma will be number one, you're a big old scary monster man, you gotta be big and scary for that. Strength next, that will handle the big part of Big Old Scary Monster Man. Constitution after that, you only die if people find your heart in its chest and not the regular chest a heart is in. Follow that up with intelligence, you're kind of an ocean god, so you've got to understand the religious aspects of the world. Wisdom is a bit low, we'll get perception, but your sailing skills are more based on the ocean being, you know, yours. We'll dump dexterity though. If you're not teleporting, you're slow and steady, like a turtle. A SEA TURTLE! Simic hybrids are humans that were combined with animals by scientists. That's not you. You were cursed by an ocean goddess because you didn't text her back. That's a weird background. We'll use custom lineage for that. Bump your charisma with your two free points and take the tough feed for plus two HP every level. Again, you're kind of indestructible. I wanted fighting initiate for dueling, but it turns out our starting class doesn't get any martial weapons, so can't do that. That's okay. You're really hard to kill. Tough feat is good. Grab Intimidation for your skill of choice to say Jack Sparrow with all of the power of Bill Nye, and take the Sailor background for Athletics and Perception, because your life, your love, and your lady is the sea. Literally, that's not just a song reference. Speaking of that, Warlock. You get two skills, which we do before we talk about the Fathomless, because that's how I did it in the first video. I really just want to say Fathomless right away, because that would transition so well from the last line of the background section. Now, no matter what I do, it's going to feel like a clunky mess that doesn't flow. Anyway, Arcana and Religion. Fathomless Warlocks are great for Warlocks who get their powers from the ocean, not girls who control water on their own. There's a distinction. It's about the Katara video. People said, oh, she's gotta be a Fathomless Warlock because water, but like there's other water classes. Anyway, you get gifted the sea for a 40 foot swimming speed and the ability to breathe underwater. It would be kind of awkward if you sent your ship underwater and then drown. This is another reason we didn't choose Simic Hybrid. We would already get swimming speed and the ability to breathe underwater from this. So you wouldn't get any benefit from the animal enhancement. The main draw here is the Tentacle of the Deep, which summons a tentacle that's 10 feet long as a bonus action and lasts for one minute. That tentacle can make attacks as a bonus action that deal 1d8 cold damage and reduces a target's movement speed by 10 feet. It's basically the spell Ray of Frost. Every round is a bonus action for a minute and you can conjure it an amount of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Since you're kind of not allowed to stand on the land, it's a good thing that Fathomless Warlocks get Create or Destroy Water, letting you create or destroy up to 10 gallons of water as an action. I'd recommend creating it in a bucket so you can stand in it for negotiations. To be scarier in those negotiations, grab the spell Cause Fear, forcing a wisdom saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier on a creature and frightening them for up to a minute if they fail. You're the only villain in the franchise to have two movies. Flex that big villain energy. For your cantrips, Toll the Dead forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, dealing 1d8 necrotic damage to those that fail, and 1d12 if they have less than full HP. A black spot corroding your hand for missing your appointment with the oceanic Grim Reaper? That rings a bell. Toll, toll the Dead rings a bell. It's a pun. Infestation forces a constitution saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 1d6 poison damage, and they have to move in a random direction as your barnacles corrode their mind. Apologies to the folks in Bikini Bottom. I know that's a sailor word for you. Second level warlocks get Invocation, special abilities you get for running the Atlantic Corpse Uber service. Fiendish Vigor lets you cast False Life on yourself at the first level, giving you 1d4 plus 4 temporary HP for an hour without concentration, basically giving you one extra hit. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor at will, making your AC 13 plus your Dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor, though in your case it's subtracting your Dexterity modifier. That's fine, cast False Life. This is still your best AC option, Davy takes hits and shrugs them off. 
Third level warlocks get a packed boon, a gift from the ocean to make you more formidable. Find familiar would let you summon an octopus, but calling an octopus a kraken is like calling a beagle a pit fiend. So instead, pack the blade. It gives you a magical weapon you can conjure at will to be able to stab ghosts. Don't you want to stab ghosts? I do. I hate ghosts. For this level spell, Misty Step lets you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action to step onto your ship and pop out somewhere else like the Kool-Aid Man with a giant mutant crab arm. We'll get the crab arm. That's just gonna take a second. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement. Bump your constitution and charisma modifier to live longer as a terrifying squid man with a terrifying squid. For this level spell, hold person paralyzes a target that fails a wisdom saving throw for a minute depending on your concentration, locking someone to the deck of your ship so your whole crew can get some crits off if they're within five feet of them. And your tentacle will too, to really pump that damage out. Fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Thirsting blade lets you attack twice with your packed weapon. It's pretty much mandatory if you're fishing as a gish. Wait, I meant gishing as a fish. For this level spell, counter spell lets you shut down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level. Just straight up swallow in any incoming magic, not dying is important when you're the ferryman of the dead. Or just like, skip out on your job. Chill out on the boat, blast some Jimmy Buffett, shake some margaritas. I'm sure nobody's gonna get mad if you don't do your job. That tends to go well for warlocks. Sixth level fathomless warlocks have an oceanic soul, meaning that you get resistance to cold damage and creatures can understand you when you speak underwater. My big takeaway from this is that I need to make all of the characters in my campaigns who aren't fathomless warlocks unable to communicate underwater. Players in my campaign have been waiting in an underwater city for almost an entire year thanks to quarantine. Please wash your hands and wear your masks. I want to wrap that storyline up. Guardian Coil lets you use your reaction to reduce damage by 1d8 whenever anybody is attacked within 10 feet of your tentacle friend. Set it up next to yourself, and this can make you a very solid tank. For this level spell, Fear forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 30-foot cone, frightening them if they fail and forcing them to run away until they're out of your line of sight for a minute, depending on your concentration. Honestly, that's probably kind of you. Running away is a good idea. 7th level Warlocks get 4th level spells. Control Water is exclusive to the Fathomless list in terms of Warlocks, not in terms of any caster. It lets you control water in a 100 foot area you can part it make big old waves change the way it moves or make a whirlpool which is objectively the coolest option the whirlpool is five feet wide at the base 50 feet wide at the top and 25 feet tall a creature can make an athletics check against your spell save to avoid getting pulled in but if they fail they take 2d8 bludgeoning damage and are forced to make the same save every turn with disadvantage to escape that's the opposite of finny fun for this level's invocation, Improved Packed Weapon lets you add 1 to your attack and damage rolls with a packed weapon, and I guess I should point out, a finesse weapon doesn't have to use your dexterity modifier, even if it can. So, you can use a rapier with your strength modifier, we'll need that for something later. Also, I'll repeat, Davy Jones is a slow and steady dude. He's He's got like a peg crab leg thing. Doesn't make him fast. Crabs are fast but he isn't. Eighth level warlocks get another ability score improvement. Cap off your charisma modifier. If you need to convince souls to come to the afterlife, this is pretty much mandatory. For this level spell, Dimension Door lets you teleport 500 feet as an action and even bring someone with you to the other side of your ship. Ninth level warlocks get fifth level spells. And if you want to teleport short distances consistently, Far Step lets you teleport 60 feet as a bonus action every round for a minute, depending on your concentration. Delete Misty Step from your spell list. As a warlock, there is no reason to keep it after you get Far Step. For this this level's invocation, Undying Servitude, lets you cast Animate Dead once per long rest without using a spell slot, turning a corpse into a zombie or skeleton under your control for 24 hours. You can recast this spell to reassert control over four corpses at a time, giving you a small crew to get things done. It also doesn't require concentration, so now anyone who's fighting you also has to fight four zombies. Not that doing that is particularly difficult, but it's always nice to have help. Tenth level Fathomless Warlocks get Grasping Tentacles, which is just the spell Ivard's Black Tentacles. This creates a 20-foot square of spooky tentacles, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside. Failing that, they take 3d6 bludgeoning damage and are restrained for the minute-long duration. They can make a dexterity or strength check to try and break out on future turns, but every turn they're restrained, they take another 3d6 bludgeoning damage. But there are some differences with your version. I was lying earlier when I said there weren't like a liar. You can't drop concentration on the spell as the result of taking damage, and casting it gives you temporary HP equal to your warlock level, making you more of a beefy fish, like a manatee. That's a sea cow, and they're delightful. Put a manatee in your game, cowards! 
Oh, and your tentacle now deals 2d8 damage and defends against 2d8 worth of damage. So that's better. 11th level warlocks get a Mystic Arcanum spell. It's a 6th level spell you can use once per long rest instead of short rest because it's too good. For you, I think Mass Suggestion is a great option. Forcing a Wisdom Saving Throw on up to 12 creatures. Failing that, they have to follow a simple, non-harmful command you give them. Sail the ship to Port Royale. Boom, you're set. Your crew goes to work for 24 hours and you don't need to concentrate. Cast it, take your 8 hour long rest, then cast it again. 12 crew members bound to your service till Judgment Day. Or until like a blacksmith impales one of your vital organs. Either or. 12 level warlocks get another ability score improvement. Get your strength up. What is a fishy gish without a sword that goes swish swish? Aye aye. For this level's indication, Devil's Sight gives you 120 feet of dark vision that cuts through even magical darkness. Sailing through trenches has to be pretty dark. You need to be able to see the sea you're sailing through. 13th level warlocks get a 7th level arcanum spell. Etherealness lets you hang out in the border ethereal plane. You can move in any direction, but going up or down requires twice as much movement. You can walk through walls that only exist on the material plane, and creatures on the material plane can't perceive you until you pop out sometime in the next eight hours. That means that even though you have a negative one stealth score, you can still sneak up on people and you can walk through walls. You can't pop in and out, unfortunately, but it's still pretty fun, and you can use it to really cheese a dungeon or surprise a pirate that was supposed to be dead. 14th level Fathomless Warlocks get Fathomless Plunge, letting you bring five willing creatures with you as you blast into the depths and emerge in a body of water as big of a pond a mile away. Ideally, it would be more, but hey, a disengagement option that brings a party of six a mile away in a single action? That's pretty useful. You could use it to get away, or you could use it to ambush someone you know is sailing nearby. 15th level Warlocks get an 8th level Arcanum slot. Dominate Monster forces a Wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, you take control over them for an hour, even controlling them directly if you want to use your action. Otherwise, it'll just do its best to obey your rules. A Kraken has a plus 11 to Wisdom saving throws, and weirdly, no Legendary Resistances. So at this point, if it rolls a 7 or lower, it's yours. Those aren't great odds. But when you think about it, it's a 35% chance to take over a challenge rating 23 monster, so it's definitely worth it. For this level's indication, it's time for the Lobster Claw. Master of the Myriad Forms lets you cast Alter Self at will, creating a natural weapon that deals 1d6 damage using your strength, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, whatever kind of damage you want to make your hand into, it does that. It also has plus one to attack and damage rolls. If this seems good, it shouldn't because it isn't. It requires your concentration. You'll do more damage with your rapier and you can conjure that at will anyway. It's accurate though, and the only other way to get a claw would be to make you a tabaxi or a turtle. Despite all the aquatic beasties you're made of, I don't think any of those are catfish. You could also use it to change your appearance and get a swimming speed, but you already have a swimming speed and Ah, uh, you, you got tentacles on your face. That's cool. Don't change that. 16th level warlocks get another ability score improvement. Keep getting your strength up to stab harder and really run your enemies through. 17th level warlocks get a 9th level arcanum spell. Foresight just gives you that big end boss type feel. With advantage on every attack roll, saving throw, and ability check, creatures attacking you have disadvantage and you can't be surprised. You've got a connection to the sea that makes you impossible to get the upper hand against. Speaking of controlling the seas, you know what could help you see things better? <laughs> An arcane eye. At the 18th level of warlock, you can scoop up another invocation like visions of distant realms to cast arcane eye at will. That makes a floating invisible eye that you can see through and you can move it 30 feet with your action. This pairs really nicely with Fathomless Plunge if you need to find out where people are before you swarm them with your sailors. 19th level Warlocks get our last ability score improvement. I recommend capping off the strength modifier or maybe buffing the constitution for more HP. At this point, with the tough feet, you have around 180 by the end of the build. That's not too bad. I think it's fine. Our capstone is the 20th level of Warlock because it's a pretty good capstone, making you an Eldritch Master. This lets you spend a minute to ask the ocean very nicely to give you five more spell slots, and then it does, once per long rest, effectively doubling your spell slots. If you want to, maybe mix a fighter level in here to get the dueling fighting style and medium armor proficiency. The medium armor proficiency isn't in character, but it does help out with one of your weaknesses. We'll get to that in a second, but first we need to talk about what's good about this build. First, you're really good at locking people down with tons of spells to stop people from running, which would be really nice if you were fighting a bunch of swashbucklers. You've also got a bunch of teleportation options to move all around the seas, making escaping from you very difficult. Finally, you can basically reduce incoming damage by 2d8 per round thanks to your funky tentacle guard, which makes your 180 HP pretty substantial, especially with temporary HP every time you use a Vard's Black Tentacles. 
For weaknesses, your AC is so bad. Your best AC option is 12 with Mage Armor. You could fix this by switching your Strength and Dexterity at home. It's not as accurate to the character, but it would work much better. We just need Strength for Alter Self to be decent. Oh, also, Alter Self is terrible. There's no reason to use it other than flavor, and you can't even get your extra attack with it since it's not your packed weapon. Grab Eldritch Blast and Agonizing Blast. It's so good. It's the best part about being a warlock, but again, it's not really in character. Finally, a lot of your abilities and spells are just for water, so if you're not in water, that's bad. I'm just gonna roll the dice though and assume you're playing this character in an aquatic campaign. You're the god of ocean death. Put people into the ocean and make them die. Just watch out if someone has a strong will. They could turner the tide against you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Pearl or Amethyst from Steven Universe and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.